Compositing and blending images together is a super fun way to get creative with your editing and on one photo raw makes it incredibly easy to do. In this video, I'll show you five tips for creating beautiful, natural looking composites instead of on one photo raw. If you enjoy the video, hit that like button and as always, subscribe to our channel for all new tips and tricks on photo editing. So we're inside of photo raw here and my first tip for creating natural looking composites is to use blend modes. Blend modes are an awesome way to not only, you know, blend different layers on top of one another, but you can also use them to align different layers together. And you can also use them to remove backgrounds on specific subjects that you're trying to incorporate into your composite. So the first blend mode that I want to talk about is the screen blend mode. I love the screen blend mode. It's really awesome for composites and I specifically love it for double exposure looks. Uh, double exposures are a really awesome, easy compositing technique that you can use on a lot of different images. So let's use the screen blend mode with this photograph. I have this portrait here and then I have this desert landscape on top of it. And I want to blend these two together to create that nice double exposure uh, look. Well, to do that, all I have to do is go to my blend layer. Remember in blend modes, we have our base layer and our blend layer and the blend mode determines how that blend layer looks on top of that base layer. So let's grab our blend layer here. We're going to go into the gear icon to access our blending options. And I'm just gonna head right down here to screen. Once I select that, you can see we're already getting that nice double exposure look where it's removed the desert from the area around our subject and we have it placed right inside of that portrait there. So if we turn that off and on, here's our normal and here's our screen. Now that we've used that screen blend mode, what we're going to do here is we're going to pull up on the contrast a little bit and pull up on the midtones of that blend layer. And that's going to brighten things up a little bit and give a little bit more detail into our subject there. The next blend mode that I think is really helpful for compositing is the difference blend mode. It allows you to match up and align your layers so that you know they're each positioned perfectly in the same spot. So let's take these two shots, for example, I have two different exposures of a bottle. And I know they're a little bit off for whatever reason, I bump the table, bump the camera, not sure what happened, but these two images are just a little bit off in their position. So what we can do is we can use the difference blend mode to align them perfectly. So I'll just zoom in real quick. We'll zoom into the text here. And I'm going to go into my layers and I have my top layer, this bright layer, and I'll just rename this bottom one, bottom. So we'll just rename them a little bit easier to understand. So we have top and bottom. So I have my top layer here and then my bottom layer. And I'm just going to use this gear icon again, go into the blending modes and we'll go to difference. And if I hit V on my keyboard so that I can move this top layer around, the top layer is the yellow color of that text. You can see if I move it around, it's showing me the difference in position of those layers. And the more I get close to having them perfect, it removes that yellow bright color. And what I can do is I can use my keyboard or the arrows on my keyboard, and it makes it a little bit easier to align them. And I think that's looking pretty perfect like that. Maybe a couple keys that way. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go back to the gear icon. We'll go to normal. And if we turn this top layer off and on, perfect. Looks like it's positioned in the exact same spot. And now we can go in and we can paint away different parts of this layer and they're both positioned correctly. And the last blend mode that I think is very helpful in compositing is the lighten blend mode. It's very similar to the screen blend mode. And in some cases you could do it to uh, perform this exact same technique. But in this case, I'm using the lighten blend mode. So I have a moon here and I have a cityscape. Well, I want to position this moon in my sky and have a nice moon in my cityscape. But I have this black background around my moon and it looks 
really awkward and awful. How do we get rid of that black background? Well, let's head over to our moon layer here. Let's make sure that's selected. We'll go into the gear icon again, and let's go down to lighten. Immediately, it will remove that black background from your image. And the reason being is because that black color is much darker than the sky that I've placed it on top of. And so that allows the black color to be removed entirely from the scene. So if we go back to normal, and then if we use lighten, we just have the moon in our photograph. Leads me on to my next tip for compositing, and that is to match up the color of the different layers that you're blending together. For example, we've removed this background from our moon and we just have the moon on the image and we have our cityscape that we want to blend it into, but the color of this moon is really awkward compared to the color of our cityscape. It doesn't look natural. So we have to always match up these colors to ensure the composite looks natural. Let's go into the moon layer here and I can see the, the cityscape is much cooler of a temperature. So let's head down into the color section and the develop tab and let's just cool that down quite a bit. And it's already looking much better and much more natural in this scene by cooling it down. If we have it at the original, it's really, really warm. And this could happen with your backdrops as well, where you are modifying the background color rather than your subject color. Let's take a look at that. So in this example, we have just a person in a portrait that we've taken and we've removed the background so that we can add in our own custom one. And if we look at this background, it seems quite blue and cool compared to the warmness and warmth of our subject here. So in this case, we'd want to grab the background. I'm just going to rename this. We're going to grab the background layer and we're going to head down to our color and we're going to modify that versus modifying our subject. Especially in portraits, you probably don't want to modify the color of your, your person too much. You want to modify that color of the background instead. So let's just warm the temperature up for our background. And you can see already it's, it's looking much more natural and it's blending in with the, his color uh, much better. Whereas if we go back to the original, it's very, very cool. If we head up to a little bit more warm temperature, it's looking a lot better as a composite. My next tip for creating awesome natural looking composites is to match up the lighting between your layers. We talked a bit about matching up the color. Now let's talk about matching up the lighting because it does play a really important role in compositing. So let's just take a look at our, our different layers here. So I have this scene with a woman walking in a field with a guitar, and then I have this forest scene, and I want to place this woman in this forest scene. Now, if we take a look at the scene that this, this woman is in already, it looks very processed. It sort of has this moody, dramatic feel. It has some stark contrast in the background, and you can see that it's just been processed quite a bit. Whereas if we look at our forest layer, it looks pretty unprocessed, almost raw. It's very natural and neutral. So we need to keep that in mind when we're bringing in our subject into this forest that these are two different exposures and two different styles and we need to match them up in the composite. So I've gone and I've just cut out the subject from the scene here and I'm just going to position her real quick and then we'll talk about the tips for matching up the lighting. So I've positioned the layer and Already we can see that the exposures are not matching up. You know, if, we, if we turn this off and on, she's looking a little wonky in there. What we can do now is we can grab our forest scene and we can try to match up that style and that exposure for our subject. Remember, we don't really wanna modify our subject too much, especially if it's a person, because you can make it look unnatural really quick. We really wanna mold our environment to fit the look of that person. So let's grab our forest layer and we're going to go in the effects tab and I'm going to add a filter and I'll add the curves filter. The reason that I'm adding the curves filter is because it's going to allow me to create that, that cinematic sort of moody dramatic vibe 
that we saw in that scene with the lady in it. So let's go to our curves filter. And the first thing I wanna do is grab my black point, this far bottom left point, and I'm just going to drag it straight up quite a bit. Now that's going to incorporate that foggy haziness that you see in those cinematic looks. And to tone that down and to control it, we're going to drop a point in our shadow tones, the point between our blacks and our midtones, and we're just going to pull that down and we're going to give it more contrast. And now that we've moved that shadow point down, let's drop a point near our midtones and our highlights and let's just pull that up a little bit. And this takes a little bit of finagling, but once you get it right, it'll look just like the picture that you were modifying. So maybe we don't need that much of that black point up there. And I think that's looking much better. It looks much more natural now if we turn off this tone curve here. It's really matching up that style and mood a bit better than it was when this is turned off. So now that we've modified that style, one thing that we can do to really elevate the look here is we can paint a bit of light into this forested area and that will clean up a little bit of this edge around our subject. So to paint in that light in our background layer, let's just go to the local adjustments tab. And I'm going to rename this light background. And we'll select lighten. And we're going to go up to our top tool modifier bar and we're going to choose this adjustable gradient tool. And we're going to use this shape and we're going to choose edges. And I'm going to drop this down here. And this is going to incorporate a really intense bright light in front of our subject there. Now we don't want it that large. So let's make this much smaller. Let's twist it around. Keep making it a bit smaller there. Position it right there. And then we're going to use this feathering to feather it like that. Now I know it's quite intense, so let's go into the opacity and let's just lower that a little bit. And if I turn this off and on, it does a nice job of just blasting in a bit of light in front of our subject and sort of making sure that the edges on the top don't show through. So let's go and we'll grab our subject cutout now and let's modify the light on her just a little bit. So I'll use the develop tab here and I'll just go into my tone and color. I'll add in a little bit of contrast and then I'm going to pull up on my mid tones a little bit. And maybe a little bit more contrast as I pull up on the mid tones. Just like that. So if I turn the preview off and on for the edit of our subject cutout, it's very, very subtle, but it's doing a nice job of making this layer look like it's supposed to be in this scene. My next tip for creating awesome composites is to make sure you have shadows. Whenever you have light, especially a blasting bit of light like we have here, we're going to have some shadows in the photograph. So let's use a local adjustment to easily paint in shadows behind our subject. So I'll grab my forest layer. I'm gonna use local adjustments here and I'm going to add another adjustment and we'll rename this one shadow. I'm going to keep it at that darken preset, the exposure at negative one. And I have my local adjustment brush selected. I can also grab it with K on my keyboard and I'm going to ensure that I have my mode sent to paint in. Now what I can do is I can go down behind my subject and I'm just going to brush in where I think those shadows would be 
in the photo. Just like that. And if I head over to my shadow local adjustment, I'm just going to pull up on the contrast a little bit, make it a little bit darker there. And if we turn this off and on now, it really helps to bring in that perspective and ensure that the composite again is natural. And shadows are a bit tough. And if it doesn't look that natural, it's really not the biggest deal because people aren't really too focused on the shadows oftentimes. But the more you practice and paint in those shadows, the better you'll get at it. My next tip for creating awesome natural looking composites is to use the new stamped layer feature. The new stamped layer feature allows you to merge your layers together while keeping the original layers in your layers pane. So I want to create a single layer with this look here, with these layers sort of molded together. But I don't want to lose the editing capability of the original layers. So what I can do is I can right click the top layer here and I'm going to choose new stamped layer. That's going to duplicate those layers and it's going to merge them into one single composite while leaving those original layers in my layers pane. So if I turn these off and on now, I have my original layers, but I also have that single composite layer that I can use. So let's just rename this composite because it's our melded, blended together layer. And what I wanna do now is I can go into the effects tab, I can add a filter, and if I style, let's say with a LUT, that LUT is now applied to the entirety of the photo and it modifies every single layer together. Those are five tips for creating natural, awesome looking composites. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.